on the British economy turning round by the middle of next year. In the end, of course, what matters in government in circumstances like this is what works. To tackle the question of whether it'll work and to get some sense of the sheer scale of what's up, our economics editor Paul Mason is here. The aim of this budget was not to balance the books, but to stop an inevitable recession turning into a slump. That's how it'll be judged. So the first thing we've got to ask is this. Does Alistair Darling have a realistic understanding of how bad it's going to get? If he doesn't, then every figure in the document is wrong. Because of the wide-ranging measures I'm announcing today, and the many strengths of the British economy, I am confident that the slowdown will be shallower and shorter than would have been the case. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I am also confident that as the United Kingdom, as an adaptable and open economy, will be well positioned to benefit from a return to growth in the world economy. Now last year, Alistair Darling told us this is how the economy would grow. 2.5% in 2008, up to 3% in 2009, and then up to 3% in 2010. That is no pulp fiction, because here's the new projection. This year, the economy grows by 0.75%. It's been in recession, of course, since July. Then in 2009, it shrinks by 0.75% to 1.25%. But then, it's supposed to grow again in 2010, and by 2011, it's soaring away again. This early end to the recession predicted by Alistair Darling is much more optimistic than many independent forecasters. So, is it right? Now he's being, I think, pretty complacent about the outlook two years hence. He thinks the economy is going to be recovering quite strongly. I don't. If the Chancellor is wrong, then the conclusion is going to be some appallingly high borrowing numbers. They look high already, but frankly, in those circumstances, you won't have seen anything yet. To boost the economy, the Chancellor is planning a tax giveaway, the so-called fiscal stimulus. The total amount is 20 billion. Now about 12 billion of that will come from cutting VAT. Another 3 billion from changing personal allowances and basic tax rates, and the rest from delaying car tax rises and extra benefits for pensioners and the poor. When the economy shrinks, the amount of tax collected automatically shrinks too. So if you cut taxes on top of that, you have to borrow more. And it's the sheer size of the borrowing that's shocked people. The government borrowed $36.6 billion in the last tax year. This year, it will borrow $78 billion, $118 billion next year, and over the next five years, a whopping $458 billion. That will take the national debt to 57% of GDP, and that's over a trillion pounds. It's very hard to predict in advance uh, whether £20 billion will turn out to be enough. Uh, the VAT cut should, in principle, encourage spending and also encourage people to bring forward spending to the point at which the economy uh, is weakest. Uh, but uh, the underlying health of the financial system is also very important too. So there's only so much that fiscal and monetary policy can do. And unfortunately, even after the event, we won't be able to judge definitively whether it worked or not. But once the economy picks up, Alistair Darling plans tax increases. He'll raise national insurance and bring in a new 45% rate of income tax for people on £150,000. This is a very big giveaway followed by a very big take back. The Chancellor is essentially pumping in another £16 billion of spending into the economy next year in an attempt to uh, make the recession less deep than it otherwise would be. Three years later, he'll be taking £22 billion out of the economy through higher taxes and a squeeze on public spending. So it's a remarkable swing from giveaway to takeaway. The other way he's going to get the money back is by reducing the rate of growth in public spending. It has been 3.5% a year. It'll fall to 1.2%. Now, most budgets are judged against pre-existing rules, the Golden Rule, the Sustainable Investment Rule, but this is the first budget for 10 years where there are no rules. What we've got is unbalanced books this year, last year, and every year until 2016. Well, Newsnight yields to no one in its taste for the more abstruse points of economic policy, but the success or failure of what was announced today won't be entirely determined by pointy-headed economists. It will hang upon how people, usually referred to as real people in contrast to the pointy heads, behave. 
Alex Fritzen reports now from Swindon. It boomed throughout the 90s and is considered a perfect microcosm of the UK.